Begin reclined onto your back with your knees bent, feet planted about hip width apart. We're starting with posterior pelvic tilts. If it helps, you can bring your hands to your hips to better feel the movement until you're familiar with it. Tilt the pelvis, tucking the tailbone under and flattening the back, then return to neutral. Repeat. Avoid overarching the lower back. We want to work against that. Get a feel for this motion as this is what is important to do during the core exercises that follow. It's a small movement but it makes a huge difference in your form and alignment. Ending with a tuck, draw your right knee in with small pulses, keeping that left leg bent. Lower the right leg, adjust your pelvis as needed, and repeat on the left side. Lower the left leg, tuck the pelvis and then with your arms at your sides march the feet alternating sides to a tabletop position. With both feet down, readjust your core. Bring both feet to a tabletop position. Alternate toe taps down, hinging at the hip with little to no movement in the knee joint. Place your hands on your knees and relax the legs for a short rest.
If the last exercise was not painful, we're going to do double toe taps this time. If you prefer, you can repeat the alternating toe taps. Returning to a tabletop position, arms at your sides, adjust the pelvis. Lower both legs together, hinging at the hips, tapping the toes down and return. Avoid movement from the knee and move as slowly as you need to. for a rest. Arms at your sides, lower your feet to the mat, knees bent. Begin moving the legs from one side to the other, lowering them as much as is comfortable. You can move just from the hips or find a little twist in the body lifting slightly through the seat. To center, spread your arms out wide and raise your legs to a tabletop position. Keep the feet and knees glued together as you lower your legs to one side, keeping them together as you lift and twist them over to the opposite side. Continue moving with control and avoid pulling your knees in toward your chest, keeping them in that table position. To center, arms at your sides, lower your feet. Take the time to adjust yourself as needed and remember to tuck the pelvis. Cross your arms over your chest and keeping your neck in a neutral position, your gaze up towards the ceiling, lift the shoulders, and lower them back down. Repeat.
arms to your sides, return your legs to a tabletop position. We're lifting the shoulders again, this time tucking the chin down towards the chest, arms float, hands reaching in the direction of the feet, lower, and repeat. down and take your time transitioning onto your belly. Adjust yourself so that your hips and pubic bone are pressing down, your feet are flat, toes pointing straight back, arms reach ahead of you. Slide your arms in, coming to a sphinx pose. Arms tucked in close to the body, elbows lined up under the shoulders as you lift the chest and get long through the back and neck, drawing the shoulders down and back. We're going to move into Cobra Pulses. For this you can choose to keep your hands where they are or draw them in beneath your shoulders. Pressing as high as is comfortable in Cobra, then lower back down. Repeat with the option to lift the body higher and higher with each pulse if it feels good, making sure that you are continuing to actively press your hips and pubic bone down. Onto your forearms now, elbows under the shoulders, we're moving into a forearm plank hold. You can begin from your toes or modify from the knees. Make sure that you are tucking the pelvis under just like we practiced, keeping the core engaged and staying strong in the arms and shoulders, getting wide through the shoulder blades. If you started on your toes and are losing form, you can lower to your knees to modify. If you started on your knees, option to move to your toes if you feel strong. the knees and make your way back to a wide knee child's pose. 
pull the big toes in together, spreading the knees wide as you send your hips back over the heels and lower your heart. Try to release any tension in your back in this position for a rest. send that right foot forward to a low lunge position. Hands on your knees, hips on the floor, or one hand holding a wall. Torso can stay upright or lean slightly forward. Keep your front foot and back knee wide apart for more stability. Front knee stacked over the ankle. Lean into the hips with each exhale. Option to raise the arms overhead if you're feeling it. Send the left foot forward to low lunge on the opposite side. into a forearm side plank hold with the option to modify with the knees down. Slight bend in the knees, line up the lower elbow beneath the shoulder, top hand on hip, raise the hips to hold. Option to straighten out the legs and stack the feet, raising the knees, or to lower the knees if you began fully extended. the knees if lifted and rotate to repeat side plank on the opposite side. your belly, then stretch it back to that wide knee child's pose.
a tabletop position, line up your wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Press down into the tops of the feet to relieve pressure from the knees. Spread the fingers wide, fingertips clawing down to relieve pressure from the wrists. We're moving from a flat back to cat pose and back. Begin by rounding out the back, pressing through the hands and getting wide through the shoulder blades. Then return to a flat back, engaging the core. Repeat. safe to do so on your next rep, we can begin to move through cat-cow, rolling through the flat back to dip the belly in cow pose, lifting the chest and gaze. If not, continue on how we've been moving. In cat-cow, find a smooth flow from one pose to the other, beginning the movement from the pelvis tilting one way or the other as the rest of the back follows. Return to tabletop, re-engaging the core, pelvis tucked as we go into bird dogs. Extend the right arm and left leg, then lower. Opposite side, left arm, right leg, and lower. Stay strong through your midsection and avoid dipping in the lower back, engaging the glute to raise the leg with control. table, lower down onto your side, head in hand, knees bent, lining up the soles of the feet with your back. Keeping the feet glued together, lower and lift the top knee in clamshells, activating the outer edge of your glute, moving at your own pace. Don't lower your knee all the way down to touch the other between reps, keep the glute engaged throughout.
lining yourself up to repeat the clamshells, again moving at your own pace. Lower the leg and turn onto your back, knees bent, feet planted, hip width apart, arms at your sides. Adjust your pelvis and engage the core. Squeezing tightly through the glutes, we're going to lift and lower the hips in bridge pulses for a count of five up and five down. It's okay to touch the seat all the way down between reps here if you need some relief. Otherwise, stop just before your tailbone touches down, moving the hips back up, keeping the glutes engaged throughout. Lower all the way down and draw the knees in for a rest. Bring your legs to a tabletop position and send your arms straight up as we move into dead bug. Right arm overhead as you lower and extend the left leg. Return, opposite side. Continue moving at your own pace with as much control as possible.
lower your arms to your sides, feet down to the mat, knees bent up, tuck the pelvis. Next, I want you to draw the left leg in as you press against it with your right hand for a count of five. Release. To the opposite side, you are actively pulling your leg in as you press against it with your opposite hand for five. And release. Continue alternating sides, creating tension in your obliques or side abs as you hold. The tension can be so great that you even shake a little. Now take the time to adjust your hips, then draw the right knee to a reclined twist, holding it over to the left with the left hand. Option to extend the right arm out to the side, left leg is extended. Make sure that both shoulders remain grounded in the twist. Find a position that is comfortable for you to hold here, playing with the height at which you're holding that knee. You may even get a little deeper into the twist as you hold. Take your time to release and repeat on the opposite side. Release onto your back, knees bent, feet planted, cross the right foot over the left leg, then hold on to the left leg as you draw it in toward you. Lower the left foot and take your time repeating the figure four stretch on the opposite side.
Release the stretch and make your way to a seated position. Hug your knees, rounding out the back to finish up. Wiggle and twist as needed to loosen up, taking your time before coming to standing. 